Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome today we'll be looking at Christ the Creator. Christ the Creator of all things. Christ the Creator, the Originator, the Initiator, the Founder of the heavens and the earth. So we're looking at uh, a big chunk of what he is in his person. I mean, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is infinite, is unsearchable, but we're just looking at the creator aspect of him. So uh, we take our anchor scriptures from Colossians 1 verse 16, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether they be dominions, thrones, principalities or powers, all things were created for him and he is the being, the founder of all things. So there was, there's nothing that was created that was created, that it wasn't Christ that created it, which agrees with what John chapter 1 also tells us that all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. So there is nothing made that was made that Christ wasn't the originator. He is the creator of all things. He owns the heavens and the earth. And it's a marvel to just be aware that our Savior is not just um, our Redeemer, but it's also the creator of all things in heaven and on earth. By Him, all things were created. What a joy. All things were created through Him, through Him, which we will also look at the prepositions that the scripture is used through Him, for Him, by Him, unto Him. We have a different page, we're going to talk more about that. But through Him essentially is, a, is the active instrument through which creation came into be. For Him means that is the goal, the ultimate consummation, the purpose of every created thing. And unto Him means that they were actually targeted at preaching Him to the world. For example, the sun, the moon the stars, the land, the water, all these are pictures. They are different pictures, just a little dimension of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is before all things, Colossians 1 17, he is before all things and in him all things consist. So even before Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, as someone said, I think it was most more of blessed memory that there is a Genesis chapter 1 verse 0, that Genesis chapter 1 verse 0 is before the beginning God was our God is then in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth because before the beginning before anything was created God had been God is one but trying God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit and in him all things consist that is the constituent of every living thing have their source from the Lord his person is the source of all things so the Son for example I mean if you if I bring up a chair for you'll be able to tell me that okay this chair was made in, made out of wood nails etc etc but so when we look at the sun what are, what materials were used to make it we can't tell but the scripture tells us that he is it is true in all things were made that is, is the source the composition the materials which is the world of his power so all positive things are but a shadow pointing to christ as their reality anything that is adding value to man to humanity they are just well, I call it a sermon in itself, preaching to us. Uh, maybe I could read from Romans chapter one, verse uh, Romans chapter one, that uh, through creation the invisible things of God was. Made. Romans chapter one, uh, from verse Romans one, verse twenty, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and god there so that they are without excuse that is the invisible the things of creation were mainly created to teach us a lesson for example the sun i mean who can ever hide which man can ever hide himself from the sun the sun provides a benefit to us. so the water as well is the living water is the true sun is the land so all positive things are created as a picture and a shadow of christ so when it, especially in the, you find this a lot in the in the Gospels when the Lord said, especially in John, I am the true vine. So if He says it's the true vine, then invariably there's a fake vine. So whatever vine we're looking out, uh, maybe at the forest or wherever, it's telling us that that is telling us a lesson that look whatever this vine is is just saying is a specific aspect of the Lord Jesus it's the reality of all the reality of every positive thing so is the true vine like I mentioned that that means the actual vine we see is just a lesson about Christ the son is preaching about Christ to us is the son of righteousness s-u-n is the real food actually even said I'm the true food 
is the true drink as well john chapter 6 is also the living water so whatever is the true chair the clothes we wear the actual the clothes is just teaching us a lesson that christ is the true covering for our life is the true light mention anything that is adding value to humanity and every one of them is just preaching to us about the person of the lord jesus christ in our modern day and age if the bible was written say it's the true gps that is <laughs> the global positioning system the one that directs so anything that adds value to us christ is is actually a lesson of who christ is to us what a job he's not only the creator of all things but also the one in whom all things go here that is all things are united and held together so it's not just the creator it's one thing for someone to create a product and you know they are done they will be gone but no he created the product and it is through him all things are going here they are held together is the holding center we look at in a few pages as well is the coherent center of all things that is he's holding all things by the word of his power everything will fall apart if christ just suspends his uh his um uh, is holding forth of the whole universe of creation so it's the coherent center of all things where all things are being held together he did not create a world where it will be irrelevant so he didn't create a world the universe whereby okay i've created it let uh let things just take shape no 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 he's actively involved in actually making sure that the sun is not passing its distance to the earth or else we'll all be barbecued is ensuring as well that the different universe the different planets every the boundaries of the river of the seas christ has authority he has the authority to tell them the limit how far they can go so he didn't create a world where he will be irrelevant that's why he's lord over the heavens and the earth he's not only the creator but the world through whom everything came into existence imagine a cook who mysteriously is also the first ingredient so it's not just the creator it's one thing for me to create a product for example and maybe i build a laptop and in building up a line creating a laptop that laptop is not me yes i used my brain and my mind to create that the instrument of the laptop might be a lot of things metals and what have you cables and all whatnot but in this case in the universe christ is the creator and in creating it was actually the instrument the ingredient the materials through which creation was even made and which of course is his word because by the word he framed the world so it's mysterious very mysterious and that's just the mis part of the mystery of christ is the very means everything came into existence so nothing has come into existence on this earth here that christ is not the source of it he did not create lucifer he did not create lucifer as satan lucifer was created a perfect being as one of the archangel as the archangel but he turned himself into satan so every one of them have their source of creation from the lord jesus christ and he has power also over them is the word that created all things so he created all things by the word of his power so the word of god which is god himself is the means through which god used to create all things it is god maybe i could read from hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 hebrews 11 verse 3 Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 as well the word that created all things uh, Hebrews 11 3 true faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear so through him as the word all things came into being it is through Christ as the word of God that all things came into being so this is why the word of God is very important in our life that we were created by the word so there's no situation or circumstance that we face in life that the word will not be the solution to it mention whatever it is whether it's a marital challenge career health mention its relationship the word of god is always going to be the answer the lord is going to use to fix anything all things exist together by christ as the holding center just as the wheels are held together by the hub i'm sure you've seen the wheels before um the wheels are held together because of the center hub if the hub if you take away the hub all the wheels the spokes they are just going to fall apart so christ all things exist together by christ it is the reason why the art is not the art is not sitting on any any surface any flat surface the art is just being suspended of course scientists don't know the mystery but we know from hebrews 1 that he's upholding all things by the word of his power so it's through him as the holding center that the word is being held together and been existed so we, let's now go into the prepositions that were used in the bible all things were created in him 
in means that in his person, in the person of the Lord, in what he is as the creator, the originator, the initiator, the source, the founder. So in his person, the Lord Jesus Christ, all things were created in him, in his person. Also, all things were created through him. True here means that he is the active instrument through which the creation came into being. Just like I mentioned earlier, on, like the cook, I mean the ingredients of a cook, for example, you can a cook can cook a food and say that oh, the ingredient of this food is just me as well. <laughs> of course, we all run away. We are not cannibals. So the Lord Jesus Christ, the creation itself, is not distant from him. It's not separate from him. it. Was through him, the active instrument through which everything was created. What a joy! All things were created for him, and the proposition for means that is the ultimate goal of all creation. That is, is the consummating, is the destination that every created thing finds its fulfillment, finds its purpose in their right alignment with him. It was created for him. That's why he's Lord over the heavens and the earth. He said that uh, in Psalm uh, in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell in it. So everything is. Uh, having it go fulfilled in him in right alignment so all creation find their true meaning of existence in him all creation anything that is created that their true meaning of existence is actually to be in alignment with christ because he's the one that knows the reason why they were created i don't know the reason why cockroaches were created or roaches i don't know the reason why certain plants animals i don't know everything but he has a reason and he understands that there's something that this animal this plant is doing in the ecosystem we might not even know even the parts of our body but because he is everything finds its true meaning whether it's marriage whether it's relationship career every one of those especially for us who are the redeemed we find our true meaning and existence in alignment with him christ is both the creator and the upholder of all things so we go to the other part christ is creator of all things is upholder of all things is also the inheritor the heir of all things we'll look at that later on and is the reality of all things we've looked at the reality of all things meaning that uh, created things are shadows of christ the sun the world is the living water the true food now the upholder of all things means that it is through him all things are being sustained what a joy that is not just creator is also the upholder of all things Hebrews 1 3 tells us that Christ opposed all things by the word of his power. So, by the word of his power, I don't know, just probably tells the Son, hey, stay there. The earth, stay there. It is his word that is holding the universe and putting them where exactly they need to be. So, you don't find the Son just shifting by certain uh, distance closer to the earth. No, the, the word of Christ is what is upholding all things. What a joy, what a joy. All the joy and that's the reason why he wants us and he has given us some elements of power as believers and some powers whereby in the place of prayer we begin to because somebody might say if christ is upholding all things why do we still have chaos why do we have some anarchy in some certain aspects of the world i would think that largely the blame is going to come back to us as believers because he has set us as watchmen over this earth he said whatever we decree on earth, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever we lose on earth will be lost in heaven so whatever we decree here that is has given us the power that in the place of prayer and the place of intercession we begin to determine what is happening by the authority that he has given to us it's not only the means of creation but also the means creation is sustained so there's it's one thing for you to create something it's another means to have a medium of maintaining it so creation is sustained by his very very person what a joy so christ as creator we see that in hebrews 1 10 let me read that too so hebrews chapter 1 verse 10 Christ is creator, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Christ, Hebrews 1 10, and thou, Lord, in the beginning had laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. So it's also the upholder of all things, Hebrews 1 3, just right above it. Hebrews 1 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express, let me read from verse 1. God, who has hungry time and Dallas man has spoken time past unto the fathers by the prophet, as in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed the heir of all things. Heir of all things, we will look at that in a few pages. By whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. So he upholds all things, is the upholder of all things. is also the framer, which we read earlier on, of the word. It was through him that the word was framed. I like the way the Amplified Version put it, that the way the word was. Let me read the Amplified Version. Let me read the Amplified the amplified version of Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. I like it that it was carved out like fashion or the purpose of 
the earth and the world was by him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. It says, by faith, that is in an inner trust, uh, we understand that the worlds, the universe, the ages were framed and created, formed, put in order and equipped for the intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. So it was through him, the world was framed. What a joy, what a joy to Christ our creator. So uh, all things also subsist in him. All things consist in him is before all things. And what's the difference between subsist in him? Subsist means as to exist and to be held together in him. That is all things are held together in him. Whether it is Jupiter, Pluto, the, the very different universe, the seas, every one of them, they are it's a mystery to us. We can't see all the because we don't know everything that is what is created is beyond what we can see, it's just whatever he allows us to see. But all things are held together, they subsist in Christ as the creator of all things what a joy what a joy to the lord jesus christ he is the holding center just as the spokes of a wheel are held together by the hope at the center the whole the very holding center of the whole of creation so anything this is why in the place of prayer for us as believers i keep going back to the place of prayer because the more god is unveiling himself to us as creator uh, the more our faith rises in the place of prayer when we are decreeing when we are when we are commanding things as the scriptures has given us license because we know that he has a control over situations over circumstances whether it is government whether it's nation over any circumstance he is the holding center and he has given us at least as, as far as the earth is concerned for man the authority to exercise dominion in the place of prayers that we can determine what is happening here on earth whatever is like in the lord's prayer that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven that is like god has given us that prayer as a gift to begin because there's nothing that is uh, there's nothing that is not subject to the control he's able to subdue all things by the word by unto himself in that philippian 3 21 so he has given us that gift so creation falls apart without his holding everything in creation will fall apart if christ suspends for one millisecond everything will fall apart but what a joy what a joy that he opposes all things by the word of his power the entire universe exists together in christ it's not distinct from him is the center in which all things subsist the universe is not distinct from christ <laughs> Let's not think we go anywhere and Christ is not there. It's omnipresent. Even in the region of uh, underneath the heavens, underneath the earth, even in the region of death, like David said, I think it was some months ago, that even if I go to the abyss, that he will still find the Lord being there. It doesn't mean that he manifests himself everywhere. He only manifests himself gloriously to where he's being honored. But that is not in a certain region or place, that's impossible. He's there <laughs> in himself. And of course, he could manifest himself negatively if the what they are doing is contrary to the prayers of his saint. All things not only exist in him, all things also live together corporately in him. The Lord we are serving, the Lord Jesus Christ, is not just our Redeemer, it's not just our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Justifier, it's not just uh, the life giving spirit in us, it's also the Creator of all things. So, all things not only exist in Him, all things also live together corporately in Him. That's to tell you how huge, if we could use that expression. All things came into being in Christ through Christ, by Christ, and for Christ. <laughs> Different preposition. In Christ, in the person of Christ, through Christ, that is the instrument, the ingredient of creation, by Christ, the source, for Christ, the goal of every created being. So every creature, every created thing, their true meaning and fulfillment and existence actually is going to be found in Christ. He had a purpose. He has a purpose for every created thing. So when we are praying and decreeing, when we are praising him, we are not just praising him for just being our redeemer. We are also praising him that he is the originator, the creator of the heavens and the earth. That nothing is said that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That he is Lord over the heavens and the earth. What a joy that all things came into existence through him nothing should be regarded as outside his control and which is which strengthens me and i think to us as believers as well that nothing there will be never be anything situation circumstance that christ will say ah that one is beyond my power ah wow we need to consult higher power never everything is infinitely below his control 
he has the authority, unquestionable, irresistible power, unquestionable authority and control over all circumstances or situations. But we have to be diligent in the place of prayer. Because the more we are aware of the knowledge of the office he carries and the power and the person is person, the majesty of his person, we have confidence when we are praying that whether we are telling the sun or the like Joshua did or telling the rain not to rain, because he has control. Of course, it's got to be that there's a certain plan and purpose. We you can stop the rain if, for example, it's going to disturb an event that will lead to the salvation of souls. It's not only the creator and upholder of all things, it's also the heir of all things. This will be in the future. He doesn't own all things. I don't think technically from my own understanding, he doesn't own everything yet. He owns us, the church, but he's still going to inherit everything. Of course, uh, more than likely, maybe at the millennium, at the end of age. So he's the heir, he's the appointed, he's the one God has appointed as the legal owner, the heir of all things in Hebrews 1, 2, which we read earlier. So he's creator, he's upholder, he's the inheritor, and it's also the reality of all things. What a joy, what a joy. So in the past, Christ was creator. He made the heavens and the earth. In the present, he is upholding all things by the word of his power. In the future, he's going to be the inheritor or the heir. He's going to inherit all things, all things. He owns them by legal rights <laughs> because the heavens and the earth belong unto him. He created them. But of course, some might be denying his ownership and blah, blah, blah. Of course, he has, has, he has for us who are, his, who are his redeemed, the saint, who are bought with a price. He purchased not just us, but for the whole of mankind. He paid the price for everybody. It's only those who have accepted his lordship, of course, that will benefit from him being our savior and our redeemer. So in the past, he's the creator. In the present, is the upholder and in the future it will be the heir. He owns all things legally right now but everything is still going to be everything is going to come under his airship. This I think Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10 there about where God will put everything under the airship of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. Let me quickly read that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. I think it's verse 10. Okay. Uh, with regard to the fulfillment of time that is in the end of history, the climax of ages to bring all things together in Christ, both in both things in heavens and things on the head. Everything is going to come under the headship of Christ. What a joy, what a joy to our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the creator. Christ is the upholder. Christ is the heir. Christ is the reality of all positive things. As creator, he created the heavens and the earth. As upholder, the whole universe is being sustained and sustained by him, by the word of his power of holding all things. As also here, the legal owner of all things and also the reality of every positive thing around us. The land, of course, is the land we are walking on. Colossians 2 tells us that uh, as we have received Christ, so we should walk in him. Is the true land flowing with milk and honey that God promised to the Israelites in the Old Testament is really the Canaan land, the better country. Is the son of righteousness, S-U-N, is the living waters, is the true food, is the uh, you want is the actual air we breathe as well. The reality of air is just the person of Christ, is the true light, the true cloth, the garment of righteousness. So it is the reality. All things are of him, through him, and on to him all things are of him they are through him nothing came into existence without it going through him and unto him that is with the goal is the consummation of all things they were created to bring glory to him they were created to bring honor to him for a specific purpose he had in mind so both the old and the new creation came into being by him in the old creation they came into being, he created them, Genesis 1. The new creation, which is us, the church, which is a creation that is coming from resurrection. The old creation, he spoke and they came into being. In the new creation, he couldn't just speak. He had to become a man, live as a man, now die as a ransom for man, and now resurrect as the life-giving spirit to germinate the new creation. The new creation actually costed God much more, in my opinion, than the old creation. So the new creation, the old, that's why it's the firstborn from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. So every of those creation came into being by him what a joy what a joy there will never be another creation so for by him all things were created that are in heaven and going back to colossians 1 15 for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him 
where no matter their realm of existence every one of them he created them it doesn't mean that he support the activities some of them are doing like the spiritual wickedness in high places they are they are fallen angels but he is giving authority to man so so that we can exercise dominion on the surface of the earth to restrict their operations in the place of prayer in the place of intercession so whether visible or invisible whether thrones or dominion or principalities all things were created by all things were created by him and for him for his goal for his purpose some of them have turned their purpose into something else like we read in that romans chapter one of course when they know him they will not glorify him as god he just gave them a reprobate mind the fallen angels as well he didn't create them to be in that state they turned themselves to that of course they are going to face the eternal consequence for that but all things were created by him and for him what a joy what a joy that in all things he might have the preeminence also colossians 1 16, 17. The preeminence means that by the mercy of God, I believe, by the grace of God, we do. The Lord Himself will teach us on uh, teaching on the preeminence of Christ. That is to have the first place in all things. If He's first, there is no second. He's first, and there is no other person. That is that's what it means to be Lord. He doesn't own the heavens and the earth along with some people like joint owners or joint partners. Preeminence, I believe, in the eyes of God means that He's first. There is no second first and that is it every other person are subject to him so he that he might have the preeminence in all things but by god's grace in that teaching we said earlier and also the last slide for of him and through him romans 11 and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever amen so today we'll be looking able to look at christ as the creator christ the creator of all things we said that all things were made by him in heaven and on earth visible or invisible thrones or dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him we said he is the creator is not only the creator of all things he's also the upholder of all things he's upholding all things by the word of his power we also said it's not just the upholder of all being upholding all things means that all things have been sustained the whole universe and creation have been sustained by the word of his power he's not just the upholder of all things he is also the heir of all things the appointed heir of all things the inheritor of all things he owns them they've been given to him by <laughs> by the god that the god that the mystery of the god that god is one but trying god the father god the son god the holy spirit so he's the creator of all things the upholder of all things the heir of all things and we said it's also the reality of all positive things that is the sun the moon the earth the waters the true drink the true food the true vine the good shepherd I mean mention anything that adds value to humanity and Christ is the reality the chair you're sitting on is just teaching you a lesson about who Christ is it's the one that provides true rest he said come unto me all you that labor and heavenly then I'll give you true, and I'll give you rest is the reality of the light we see in the house is where he is light himself so anything that is adding value to us as humans I believe that is teaching us a lesson that is telling us about who Christ is to us as is redeemed who Christ is to man or what Christ desires to be to man. The clothes we wear is just the reality of it. It's the one that clothes our nakedness. So all things were made by him, for him, through him, unto him. We said that all things were created in him, meaning that in his person. All things were created through him. That is, is the active instrument through which all things were created. All things were created for him. Is the goal, the consummation of every created thing. Nothing was made that was made that it wasn't Christ that made it. And all things were made by the word of his power. What a joy to this rich Christ that we have. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, the creator of all things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.